Minute Math. When you need help, you use Minute Math. Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math. And today we're going to learn about classify a real number as a natural, whole, integer, rational, or irrational number. So there are a few types of real numbers, okay, or different ways we can classify them. So the natural numbers. Those are numbers, we almost like call them kind of like the counting numbers in a sense. They start with one, then it's two, three, four, five, and so on, okay? Now, the other types of numbers we'll see is called the whole numbers. Now, the whole numbers Those include all of the natural numbers, but they add zero to it. So zero, then one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So we call those the whole numbers. Now, the set of integers. We see integers a lot. Now, integers, they include more numbers. It's kind of like more encompassing here, okay? They start with the negatives, and we go through the positives as if they're like the natural numbers and the whole number. So we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, the rational numbers. Rational numbers are a little different. So, Rational numbers, when we think of rational numbers, we think of things that can be a fraction, okay? So the way it's kind of defined, it's written as if this. We have, let's say, m over n, where m and n are integers, and n cannot equal zero, okay? So it's like any fractions. Now, of course, all of these numbers up here could be written as such, right? We could take any integer, which we just showed here, all the integers with our dot, dot, dot going forever. So for example, like if I wanted to, I don't know, make zero as a rational number, zero over five qualifies here, m and n, m being 0, n being 5, would work. Now, again, we cannot divide by 0. It's undefined there. And we see this a lot more as a classification there as like decimals, all right? So, but they have a terminating decimal or it's a repeating decimal. So those are two things we want to make sure we note here. It'll have a terminating decimal. We'll note here. Uh, terminating decimal. So for example, the fraction 15 over 8 is equal to 1.875, or we have what's called a repeating decimal, repeating decimal, and that's like 4 over 11 which is 0 0.363636, goes on forever, and we can see that written as such, 0 0.36, and repeats at 36. Remember that bar over the 36 in the decimal shows it going on forever, okay? So let's just do some quick examples here, okay? Uh, write each of the following as a rational number. Let's call that example one. Okay, so example one, write each of the following as a rational number. So write each of the following as a rational number. So the first example here, call it A, is, well, seven. Well, 7 as a rational number, I want to 
it's kind of easy, right? So seven we know is a natural number, but I want to write it as a rational in a fraction sense. Let's make it easy. Seven over one, right? It qualifies our rules. M is seven here, N is one. Both are integers, but gives you the fraction. This one zip flat is seven, okay? B, let's say B that's uh, zero. Well, how can we write that? We already talked about that, actually. And uh, I'll do a di little different example here. So I'll make my M value, okay, it's an integer, make that zero, but my N value can't be zero, right? Well, let's just pick one, makes it easy. There we have it. Lastly, let's say C here and negative eight. So if we write that as a rational number, if I can fit it in here, all right, well, fairly easy. Negative eight, my M, N is just one. Really, you take the integer that you have, put it over one, and you got it, all right? All right, so number two here, let's look at this here, okay? Write each as a, so example two, if we can fit that in. Write each of the following rational number as either a terminating or a repeating decimal. Okay? So, first one, A. We got negative 5 over 7. And that as a decimal does repeat. It's negative 0 0.714285. And this part does repeat, so it's repeating. B, we got 15 over 5. That as a decimal is 3, or if you want to see it as 3.0, or, okay, and this is a terminating decimal. It's a terminator. That's my bad Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. Don't make fun of me. C, or do it, whatever. Let me know below what's your worst and actually never mind, I'm not, <laughs> not going to say that. Don't do that. 13 over 25 is 0 0.52 and that is a terminating decimal as well. Okay? Alright, so now we're going to start the next section here. Okay? So now I'm going to erase these examples that we just kind of went over. And we're going to talk about another category, if I have some room here, so we can kind of put it all together in perspective, okay? The next type of number I want to talk about is the irrational number, okay? So we've already talked about rational numbers. What is an irrational number? So an irrational number is a little different, okay? where these rational numbers have a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal, irrational numbers do not, okay? A lot of times this happens with square roots and other types of numbers, like pi is a common one. So like we know pi is a common one, e, okay? Square root of two and so forth. There's all these different numbers out there that the decimal does not repeat. So the decimal, the decimal will go on forever, does not repeat, okay? Does not repeat. So they're going on forever, does not repeat. All right, and these are examples of that. Now, there's other ones too. So for example, um, square root of 25, a quick example here, square root of 25, that is actually a rational number that becomes a 5, and it's rational. Okay? But if we go to, let's say, square root of 11, 
That is some decimal I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, it can't be simplified anymore. Okay, so we don't actually need to write that decimal out because it would just go on forever. It's somewhere between three and four. Okay, because three squared is nine and four squared is 16. Okay, but that square root, since we can't simplify that anymore, we know this is irrational. Okay, it's irrational. It will go on forever. There's no repetition there. Okay, all of these numbers here that we've classified, they're known as the real numbers. Okay, so all of these are our real numbers. It kind of starts from the inside out. We got the natural numbers, the whole numbers, the integers, the rational numbers, then the irrational numbers. All of these are different classifications known together as a whole as the real numbers, okay? And these are pretty much all the numbers that you will end up most of the time dealing with. We call them the real numbers, okay? Now, we write these as subsets. This is actually a really good uh, diagram, okay? So let me uh, erase some room here and see if I can make a nice little diagram for you. So we first start with the set of the natural numbers. And let's call that variable we see here n. n is going to refer to the set of all the natural numbers. So we have a little subcircle here, or eclipse, or whatever it's called. One, two, three, and that's our n, our natural numbers, okay? The set of whole numbers has all of the natural numbers plus zero. W for the whole numbers, okay? Now, integers includes the natural numbers and the whole numbers. So we'll make another set around that, okay? And this is our dot, 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 right? Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 all right? And we call that our integers. Let's call it with the letter I, designate that with an I. Okay, so as you can see, as we're moving out, right, all the whole numbers, right, include zero plus all the natural numbers. Integers, same thing, integers include all the whole numbers and all the natural numbers plus some more. Those negatives there, okay? So now we're going to go to the rational numbers. Let's make another oval. I'll, I'll bring it down here so it little, fits a little better our little diagram, our screen here. We call those, those are our, um, our rational numbers, and that's designated with a Q. So our rational numbers, put a Q here. Q for our rational numbers, and we said that was the set of M over N, such that M and N are integers, and n does not equal zero. So n does not equal zero there. So again, it encompasses all of the integers, which already encompasses the whole numbers and natural numbers, but we're making fractions out of there just where n cannot be zero. And we're going to designate that, like I said, with q, so let's put q right there. Okay? So lastly, we have irrational numbers. Now, irrational numbers are a little different, right? They're not rational numbers. And so we actually designate this as Q like prime, like the opposite of the rational numbers are the irrational numbers, right? They're two separate sets there, really. Um, so our Q prime, okay, those are our numbers like pi and square root of two, etc. They are decimals that really go on uh, forever and don't repeat. So they're not rational. They're not rational. They're non-repeating and are non-terminating. Okay? So they're not rational. They don't repeat anywhere and non-terminating, meaning they're going on forever. And so there we have, really, our little mini lesson here on the different types of numbers, okay? Different types of classifications that you can get for real numbers. So all of these, again, are real numbers. 
This part here, at least for the rational part, think of it as like almost like those Russian dolls, like each one's kind of inside of each other, but the rational, the, the irrational numbers are kind of just outside of it. But all of these, what we call are real numbers, and there's a little symbol for real numbers, okay? So if you like this video, uh, please like and comment down below if it helped you, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math, Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math, MinuteMathTutor.com.